Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be reviewing some recent historical reads. So today I have a couple of works of historical fiction that I read recently which I wanted to review. Um, these are three books that I have read for the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction um, because they're on the long list and I am reading along more or less with the Walter Scott Prize. Um, I really like the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction. It's a fantastic prize. Um, I always find its selections really, really interesting and I've been reading along with the long list for a couple of years. I will leave down below in the description um, a link to the video I did talking about the whole long list. Um, but today I just want to talk about three of the books on the long list that I have recently read. Blue Post Guards by Douglas Bratton, Still Life by Sarah Winman, and The Fortune Men by Nadifa Mohammed. I have already mentioned the these three books a little bit in my reading wrap up for March um, but I'm going to talk about them in a little bit more detail today. I'm going to do them in kind of reverse order from my least favourite to my most favourite so I'm going to start off with Still Life by Sarah Winman which I did really enjoy like I think it is a really good book um, I just don't think it is entirely for me um, and I've been trying to work out what it is about Sarah Winman's writing that doesn't entirely click for me. I think it is partly that she is a slightly more literary writer for me and something about the way she writes um, and the more kind of I don't know, it's not exactly more lyrical, but I suppose the, the focus on character and theme over plot um, and the kind of meandering way sometimes um, that she writes and the kind of quantity of characters, something about that means I feel like a little bit of an emotional distance, I suppose. I don't know. I've read one other book by Sarah Women, Tin Man, which I read a few years ago. I think I like Tin Man more than Still Life, but I also sort of feel like I... I had very different reading experiences of them because Tin Man I went into with hugely high expectations because everyone on booktube at the time was absolutely loving it um, and I really really liked it I, I thought it was a great book but I was kind of expecting it to like emotionally destroy me because I feel like that's everyone what everyone had said around me but it didn't quite have the same impact on me I suppose um, like I really loved Tin Man but it was very much like a four star rather than a five star read for me um, so I feel like I've gone into still life with much lower expectations than I did for Tin Man um, and that in a way means I enjoyed it much more because I did really like it but actually I think I do like Tin Man more but I kind of went into Tin Man with very high expectations that was slightly disappointed and then still life I went into with slightly lower expectations which were kind of raised. Overall, Still Life was a really interesting read. Um, they dealt with a lot of really interesting things and there were moments that I absolutely loved. So Still Life um, is a work of historical fiction um, that starts in the 1940s um, and then spans through the following decades, um, going through the 1950s and 60s and 70s. And we're chiefly following two people um, and kind of everyone who circles around them, Ulysses Temper um, and Evelyn Skinner. And these two people meet by chance um, in 1944 in Italy during the war and they feel some kind of connection I suppose from their one meeting during the war um, and then we follow them both over a period of several years chiefly fo following Ulysses I would say more than Evelyn um, but following them both across a long period of time um, and kind of how their lives intersect and don't and all the people around them. There was a lot about still life that I really really liked. Um, I feel like it's got a lot of really interesting social and cultural history within it and the way that this book looks at kind of what it means to be a gay woman at different points in history was really really interesting and I thought was really well done. I really liked a lot of the characterization. Um, Ulysses and Evelyn are fantastic but also the character of Alice I really liked. The character of Peg I thought was really well done. Sarah Woman can clearly write really wonderful characters that really leap off the page. The book is set between Britain and Italy um, and focuses a lot on kind of Florence as a city um, and the way that it kind of explores these two very different places I suppose and two very different cultures was really interesting. There were some really wonderful moments in this book and my favourite kind of section of the whole of it was the last kind of and the hour of the audiobook which was um where we kind of flashed back from um the bit of time we were in to the very early 1900s um following Evelyn as a young woman and I just love that section so much and I kind of wish the whole book had been that section which kind of brings me on to explaining why I don't think this book completely worked for me. I think part of it is because I just wasn't as interested in all the history um, and there were some elements of the history I thought were really interesting um, and I kind of enjoyed the 1940s and 50s bits more um, but actually I just don't think I'm as interested in the 1960s and 70s as I am in the 1900s um, and that section at the end of the book which was about Evelyn in Florence in kind of 1900. 
I can't remember which precise year it was, um, but I love that section so much. And I think my own personal kind of historical interests kind of wish the whole novel had been that. So there's that element, um, which is, you know, entirely personal taste. And on another note, of also personal taste. I think Sarah Woman is possibly just a bit literary for me in that the book is very, very character and theme focused um, and not very plot focused. Um, and dramatic things do happen, but it feels quite meandering. Um, there are an awful lot of characters and sometimes I did lose track of some of the side characters and I didn't always feel like I knew what the centre of the book was. But I find it really hard to explain how I felt about this book because I feel like I should have loved it. And when I talk about it, I feel like I almost do love it because there are so many amazing things in still life which were fantastic. There were so many things that I love. Um, but when I think about all the elements that I should have loved about it or that I did love about it, I can't quite work out why it didn't hang together for me. So for example, like the book is in conversation with Ian Forster in some ways um, and with kind of a room with a view, which I really, really liked. Um, but I feel like the way it's in conversation with Ian Forster didn't like crystallise until the very end. Um, and I kind of would have liked that to be all the way through. And then there is a parrot in it. There is a talking parrot who quotes Shakespeare. And when I say that out loud, that should be something that makes a book entirely delightful and quirky and wonderful for me. But I kind of feel like it was a very quirky element in the middle of a book that wasn't very quirky. So I kind of found it a bit strange. Basically, I feel like Still Life is a great book that wasn't quite right for me. Um, so I kind of recommend it, but possibly if you're into slightly more literary fiction than is my general taste, it was really interesting, and there were things about it that I liked, but it just didn't quite... Yeah, it wasn't quite right for me. The next book I have to talk about is Blue Postcards by Douglas Bratton. This is interesting because on paper, I should have enjoyed Still Life much more. And when I was talking about Still Life, I feel like I have a lot more to say about Still Life and that I kind of found it a more interesting book. But I kind of enjoyed Blue Postcards more, even though it's like quite wacky and odd. And in some ways more literary than Still Life, but I don't know. Anyway, anyway, Blue Postcards um, is this kind of experimental novella where everything is written in the form of postcards. And so the book is made up of a hundred kind of short paragraphs, all of which could, I suppose, technically fit on a postcard. And we're hearing the story of um, various characters in Paris after the Second World War through to the present day um, through these postcards. So we're following Parley, a man in the present day who is going to a market stall and buys a postcard that's just blue, which he recognises as a postcard which was sent as an invitation to an art exhibition many years before. Um, so this starts him thinking about this artist who was a real artist called Ives Klein. Um, and then we're also following through these postcards Klein's story. And then we're also following um, the story of another man who is a tailor in Paris. Um, and these kind of three men, their lives kind of cross over and interweave in some strange fictional way. And the novella is kind of about art and it's kind of about like, fiction and what is real and what isn't real because the narrator feels quite unreliable and you kind of get the sense that the man in the present is telling the story of the two men in the past and you don't know how much he really knows about them um, and it's kind of weird and meandering but also sort of delightful and I just really enjoyed the reading experience of it. It's very short, I read it in one sitting, it only took me two hours and it is definitely more experimental and literary than the kind of book that I usually like but I also just quite enjoyed something about it. I suppose it's one of those books that although it was quite like experimental it was very like self-consciously experimental and very very self-aware um, of its kind of existence as a work of fiction, which was just something that I quite enjoyed. It meant it was almost like straightforward in its experimentalness. I don't think that makes any sense, um, but you know, maybe if you go and read it, you'll understand what I mean. It was a really interesting read um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I would say though, I was thinking about like the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction. I wonder when they make their long list and when they make their short list, I wonder if they feel like they are assessing novels as novels that happen to be historical or whether they're assessing like historical novels. I'll try and explain what I mean because I feel like Blue Postcards was a really, really interesting book, but I don't really feel like it was 
engaging with history. It is a historical novel in the sense that parts of it take place in the past, but I don't think it was really a book that was about the past, whereas Still Life is definitely a book that is about the past. So I feel like Still Life is a better work of historical fiction than Blue Postcards, but I think I slightly enjoy Blue Postcards more. So if I were kind of comparing them as novels, I would, you know, place Blue Postcards above Still Life. But if I were comparing them as works of historical fiction, I would place Still Life above Blue Postcards. So I wonder how they think about it when they judge the Walter Scott Prize, because it is a prize for historical fiction. But it, it, does that just mean that only historical fiction is allowed in it? Or does that mean that you judge it on the basis of how historical it is? I don't know. Anyway, that was a tangent. Let me move on to the next book, which is The Fortune Men by Nadifa Mohammed. This is a really interesting historical book that I really liked. Um, so this is set in 1950s Cardiff. And we're following what happens when a Somali man, um, Mahamud Matan, um, is accused of the murder of a Jewish woman, Violet. And the novel is about this murder, the murder trial, um, and these characters and everyone that surrounds them in this community of Tiger Bay. It's a book that is very much about prejudice, about xenophobia and racism, how the community turns against this man and how they believe him guilty without very much evidence. And I would say kind of at the centre of the book is his relationship with his wife Laura um, who is a white Welsh woman um, and their kind of connection with each other and with their children. Um, they've had a very kind of strange relationship in some ways um, but everything that is kind of going on kind of brings them back together um, and I thought their relationship was drawn incredibly um, it felt really really real and that was probably maybe my favourite element of the book and um, although I feel like there was so much in this to really really admire I feel like the way this book explores its themes is fantastic it looks at a lot of very serious hard-hitting things um, it is based on a true story as well and I feel like the way this book looks at the kind of complicated social and cultural structures and issues of this point in time um, of Britain in the 1950s is done really, really well. I think this was a really strong read and my favourite of the ones so far. And in some ways it is quite literary and in some ways it is kind of focused on its themes and its characters, but because we have the murder case as this kind of thread pulling us through the story, that kind of makes it feel pacey throughout. Um, and it's just a really good read. So it's definitely one that I would recommend um, and well worth a read. So those are the three books I've read in the last month um, that are on the Walter Scott Prize long list. I have also read from the long list Mrs. England by Stacey Halls, which I read ages ago. Um, I used to work at the publisher, so I worked on Mrs. England. Um, and I love Mrs. England very much. It is still my favorite to win. I still do like it more than the three books um, I've talked about today. Both, I think, in a slightly biased way because I worked on it and I and I love it um, from an editorial publishing perspective. Um, but also, I think, just because I do, I do love it. Like, even as a reader, if I hadn't worked on it, I think I would still love Mrs. England more than the three books I've spoken about today. But it's been really interesting to read four books from the long list so far. Um, I have enjoyed all of them. I feel like I've been quite hard on Still Life today. I did actually really like Still Life. Um, I just didn't completely love it. I'm very interested to see what will be on the shortlist for the Walter Scott Prize. I think it will probably be announced in the next couple of weeks. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what's on the shortlist. And I will try and read some stuff that's on the shortlist. Um, I don't know whether or not the things I've read from the long list will be on the shortlist, so I might end up with lots more to read if I try and read the whole shortlist, or possibly less. Um, I don't think I'm going to end up reading the whole long list, but I would like to try and read the whole shortlist if I can. There are quite a lot of books that are on the long list that I am still really keen to read that I haven't got to yet. I think the ones that are kind of top of my list to read, whether they're on the shortlist or not, would be The Ballad of Lord Edward and Citizen Small, China Room, and Learwife. And maybe Fortune as well, that also sounds really interesting. There are a lot of great sounding books on the long list, so it'll be interesting to see what makes the short list. And I'm sure I'll make a video um, discussing my thoughts on more books on the Walter Scott Prize long list as and when I read them. So that's it for now. Do let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. And that's all. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll be back very soon with another duckish video.